greetings from the luminary shop. I'm Rick and today I'm going to start the repairs and refinishing of this wonderful pair of gig lamps made by the White Manufacturing Company. Now I say wonderful because for being 150 years or so old, these lamps are in absolutely excellent condition. They've obviously been taken care of for all that time. These lamps were actually made by the White Manufacturing Company of Bridgeport, Connecticut. You can tell that because the name White Manufacturing is actually stamped into the floor of the lamp where it had to be done before the lamps were actually put all together. The pattern is a design made for gigs. Gigs are a two-wheeled cart with high wheels and a high seat for the driver which kind of sets him up there and kind of shows him off a little bit. The glass, which is a round flat glass on the front and a rectangular glass on the side, is indicative of a two-wheeled cart lamp. The lamps are also narrower from side to side than they are from front to back. And this facilitates them fitting between that high wheel and the body of the gig. Now the C.P. Kimball Company probably bought these high quality lamps to go on their high quality gigs. A high quality lamp for a high quality vehicle. The Kimball family originated in the New England area and they dealt in the carriage trade there for many years producing some of the finest carriages available at the time. C.P. Kimball eventually ended up in Chicago. He opened a business there in 1877 and manufactured some of the highest regarded vehicles made in the United States. Eventually the C.P. Kimball Company manufactured automobile bodies and they made bodies for the likes of Cadillac, Brewster, Kimball of course, and many other high quality automobile manufacturers. They finally closed the plant down in 1929. If you're interested in more information about the Kimball family of carriage builders, go to coachbuilt.com. They have a lot of great information there. A major problem with this glass is that it's been scratched by somebody with sandpaper sometime in the past. and this particular glass has a chip in the corner. I think we'll be able to save that glass just by polishing that chip a bit. I'd rather use it than new glass. And here's why. The new glass has that green color from the composition of the glass as compared to the old glass that has a more yellowish color. It's very noticeable when you combine new glass and old glass on the same lamp. The candle caps are of a unique design where the inner channel that the candle is fed up through is completely separate from the outer cap. So air can go up in between the cap and the tube that the candle runs in. I think the intention was for this to be keep the candle tube cool and maybe control the melting of that wax a little bit. The first step is to get the glass taken off the lamp. Here I have all but one off and you can see that I bring the heat in from the base metal out toward the bezel of the lamp. This basically allows the glass to warm up a little bit before the more intense heat from the torch gets close to it. Once I get the glass off, I'll clean it up a little bit and take it into the glass shop to get it polished. Here I have the glass set on a dark background so that you can see some of the scratches. We'll just see how Bob can do and how much of this glass he can actually save and what we might have to replace with new glass. 
In the meantime, my lovely wife Pat will go to work on cleaning up and polishing the liners a bit. It's a lot easier to get inside the lamp with no glass on it. And I'll do a few small minor repairs that are required, such as this tail cap that was smashed in. I took it off, straightened it out, and I'm soldering it back on here. Here I'm just cleaning up where I was able to get the paint off and taking off the glass. The torch kind of loosens up this hard automotive paint. One of the reasons I don't like epoxy paints is how difficult it is to get off. While I'm waiting for the glass to come back from the glass shop, I take a little emery paper and clean out all those nooks and crannies where the paint is buried back in there and now I can get it clean and ready for the glass. You can see here what the glass looked like before I took it into the glass shop for polishing. And here you can see Bob was quite successful in getting most of the scratches out of this glass. I'll solder the bezels tightly on the glass and try to make sure that all those joints are held closely together. The glass is soldered back onto each lamp in its proper position. The very first basic rule to getting a good solder joint is to make sure that both pieces of metal are clean. In this case there's a little bit of paint down in that crack that I haven't gotten out before. And so I'll get it out before I make this joint. I'm using the clothespin to just push the two pieces together a little more closely and it'll make a nicer joint. When I solder glass to a lamp like this, I work my way around the circumference of the glass. 
doing a spot here and then a spot there and finally connecting it all up. It helps to keep from getting too much heat at any one place in the glass and just sort of warms it up more evenly. When I solder a straight edge like this, I start in the middle and work my way toward the corners. It helps the glass to absorb the heat and equalize and makes it a lot less likely to chip or break that corner. Now that I've got the glass all soldered back in place and the joints all cleaned up, acid washed off, and I'm ready to start the next step. I'm going to sandblast, yep, I said sandblast, the rest of the paint off of these lamps. I start out by blocking all the entrances for air and exhaust places so that the sand won't get on the inside of the lamp. And I stuff the interior of the lamp with tissue paper just like I do when I do the painting. Again, I make sure that all of those places where the oil pot goes and the exhaust air goes out are blocked off to keep the sand out of the inside of the lamp. I tape all around the edges where the door closes to make sure that sand can't get in there.
Now that those polished silver liners are well protected from the sandblasting, I'm going to go about protecting the glass. So I'm going to tape off the bezels of this glass, even though they're going to be painted, as was often done with gig lamps. A very traditional method of finishing them was to paint them all black with no bright metal outside. I'm using Scotch 233 green masking tape as a plating resist. It's my favorite masking tape because it's so tough and so resilient to the effects of sandblasting. But even so, I'll put two layers of tape on everything. I'm about ready to start sandblasting these lamps. I use a medium to light grade of silica sand because the edges are sharp and it cuts that paint off without hammering on the metal and distorting things. I also have the exhaust suction set up a bit higher than normal so that it pulls out the sand as it just starts to break down and that just leaves good new sharp sand to do my sandblasting. The lamps come out of the sandblasting cabinet ready to paint. I'll go ahead and remove that tissue paper, blow all the sand out, and continue with the painting process. If you'd like to see the full story of the painting process, go to my video, Brewster Restoration, The Final Touch. And the lamps are finally finished and ready to go back to the customer. Those silver liners really do a fine job reflecting that one candle power. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.